So with that being said, I propose that we go to the Q&A and maybe we can start by describing our typical workflows when we were doing research type of things. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So I will switch to the notes here. Um, so yeah, I'll put this in auto scroll mode. Um, Yeah, okay. So, um, Simo, when you were doing research, how did you typically deal with data transfers and where was your data stored and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I, I was when I was doing my, finishing my master's, I, I had this kind of like horrible setup. Uh, so that, that I think everybody who's doing something eventually ends up if they have a deadline. Uh, so what I had is that I had a, I transferred some files from uh, from Triton to a virtual machine that I had on my Windows machine, and then I copied them from there to my Windows side where I was writing my my latte, uh, like actual the paper, actual the, the this yeah. the thesis. So basically, it was like I I copied the files from from the cluster to a virtual machine where I did plotting that I copied into my uh, yeah. like Windows machine. And it was it was a mess and I, I wouldn't dare anybody to replicate it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so like workflows are this kind of a thing where you, you end quite quickly end up with a workflow that is bad, but it's your workflow and now you have gotten used to it and now it's 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 too much hassle to change it anymore but the next time you start a new project you know that you don't want to replicate it anymore so so i think this is quite a common occurrence mm -hmm. for everybody so when yeah. you start working on something you you think that okay i will just like wing it i will just improve improvise whatever yeah. and then later on you re realize that, okay maybe this, this what maybe i should have planned this yeah. uh, previously mm -hmm. But nowadays, nowadays I would say that I do vast, uh, vast majority of my work either s straight on Triton or I use Git to sync all of the code so yeah. that I don't, yeah, like I don't ever have to copy any code anywhere, hopefully. There's a qu qu question: Is the cluster the VM? So, so in this case, the virtual machine was running on my Windows desktop. So it was a virtual machine that I run on my Windows desktop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because I needed some plotting yeah. things and stuff like that. That was, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know why I had. An, I I could have probably installed the tools to to the cluster as well. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So, what was my workflow? So, for many of my projects. I was quite comfortable with SSH and um, using an editor on Triton. So I would SSH to the cluster and then have all of my, like be developing, developing my code right there. And then mm -hmm. I would track my code with a version control system and usually not commit it often enough, although I would always try to. The code gets synced to, um, well, my own computer or to GitHub or something. And then I usually wouldn't make good backups of the, okay, if I had raw data, I would store it on one of the Alto file servers and then make a copy on my own computer. But if it was generated data, usually the only copy would be on Triton because it could be regenerated if absolutely needed. Although this wasn't the best setup, really. And that was pretty typical for many of my things. There's a 
great question. Like I think related to this, like because like I think things have changed quite a quite a bit. Uh, like the code transfer is very easy using Git, but but there was a question about like how do you see using VS uh, Visual Stu uh, Studio connected uh, VS so yeah. to modify the code folders and modify the S dot sh files and then run from the od od shell with s but i think that's like something that a lot of people are nowadays doing like like mm -hmm. more and more so basically like what i do commonly is that i i have terminals like i use this tool called tmuxinator to create like these templated terminals basically for myself uh for anybody who's interested and i'm i'm a I've been gotten so accustomed to Beam, so I'm I'm basically at this kind of a, like a situation where I'm, it's it's hard to change yeah. uh, learned habits, mm -hmm. but 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 so so I've I've got my workflow, but I think for many people it it's very useful yeah. that you can edit your code in the same place where your rest of your stuff is, and I think with yeah. VS Code it it has some problems related to like all of the file searching that we talked about yesterday. But it's it's a very powerful tool and very powerful interface, and you can also use the VS Code terminal to also submit the jobs. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to go to OD to submit the jobs if the VS Code yeah. works yeah. fine for you. And I agree. Like this VS Code plus Open On Demand for submitting stuff. That is a very usable workflow, and that's good. We need much more usability in clusters these days. Um. Uh, there's a question like, is it possible to work on Triton directly to files in the disks without moving files to scratch, which is not backed up? So the disks, I assume the disks are, you mean like maybe the disks on your, uh, your own, own computer or? Or could it? Uh, I mean, to me, this sort of implies mm. people don't want it on Scratch because it's not backed up. Mm. But we should say Scratch isn't backed up, but it is reliable. It's a huge yeah. rack of what, probably several hundred disks now that yeah. are all so, RAID 6. Yeah, so, so, so there's, there's a good, like, this is, I think this is a great question because it, it's like, like, how the, well, I can briefly talk about the technology. So, in the system, there's the six of these disk arrays, and each of these disk arrays is is in this right setup, so that if if one of the disks fail, like you can have lose one complete array of out of these six, like complete, like all of the disks, you could lose all of these, and it's still like duplicated, and and all of the um, all of the connections are duplicated, so there's multiple like nodes answering the connections so it's a very reliable system uh, but it's not backed up so the backup doesn't like you don't have a backup backup that protects you from human error you have a basically very reliable system that protects from uh, like system failure kind of a thing like like it's a very reliable system that protects from hardware failures and that sort of stuff but if you delete the file it's gone so it's not backed up in the sense it's very reliable yeah but it's re as reliable as you are yeah. and i i i personally i don't trust myself that yeah. much with like like not messing up stuff so that's yeah. why you taking backups is important yeah but but that, but that at the same time that's why i often think that it's the most important thing to back up is your thoughts which is basically <laughs> your code that you write mm -hmm. like if if that is under version control like I can lose a lot of stuff, and and that makes it much easier to like decide what is important and what is not. Because yeah. usually the problem is that you have, like, if you don't know what is important and what is not important, everything is important, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like if you don't know, like if you don't know what you can throw away, mm -hmm. every you cannot throw anything away basically. And then suddenly yeah. you need to back up like everything. But if you know that okay, this. This initial data set is very important because I I actually need to like record measurements from subjects or something like that. If I like yeah. I actually need to like do some measurements, then you know that that is important and you can back up. 
that. And you let's say the processing code for that is backup, uh, like inversion control. You know that you can reproduce the results with the processing code. Because in the science, you're at a problem if you cannot reproduce anyway, right? Yeah. Like, so if you have your code backup and your initial data yeah. backup, you're already like quite good to go. So you shouldn't worry about the scratch that much. Of course, like don't go removing all of your files, uh, like because like then you need to do the pre-processing again or the that kind of stuff. But but usually it, it's like. You shouldn't worry about it. It's it's much. I said say it's much more secure than the disk in the hard drive. <laughs> like yeah, the yeah, scratch yeah. Like let's give let's give an example. So on a typical computer, if one hard disk breaks, then you lose all your data. On some computers, like mine, it requires two hard disks to break to lose my data because it's mirrored across two disks. On Triton, it requires two disks to break because it's mirrored in a way that is designed this way. Um, yeah. So it is, and and my computer is sitting here in my apartment where there could be a fire or anything, but Triton's data is in a nice climate controlled and fire protected machine room. So, yeah. But if this means can it be stored on alto network disks, which are backed up and snapshotted and all that stuff, basically, no, because it doesn't have performance to be exported to the whole cluster. There's a there's a quick question about so what's the dif difference between cluster workstations and virtual machines? There's already like a good answer there. So so basically, I would just basically read it out loud so the yeah. workstation or one computer is like you have an actual computer and you have an operating system on that a virtual mm -hmm. machine is that you have an actual hardware like computer but on top of that computer you basically fake another computer so and that's like a virtual machine it's virtual yeah. because it's not actually like it's it's yeah. it's like created on top of the uh like you're in the matrix now like <laughs> basically <Yeah. laughs> like like and and then the cluster uh, is is this kind of like you take multiple computers and you stitch them together using these tools mm -hmm. that make it possible to like operate across multiple computers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. The benefits of on demand for terminals. I think this is pretty accurate. So it's the mm -hmm. ease of use. I think for most purposes, if you can, the SSH is probably better overall or mm. is it even better though well uh, i i i think it depends like i like i personally like yeah like yeah like like it's I mean, it's this kind of like you don't have to use a web browser so if you yeah. can use mm. it and directly connect it to your own desktop that's good yeah but... like the terminal is basically like like i would say it's like like it said, said that in, uh, like for example, in in blues music, music, it's not like it's not the notes you play, it's the notes mm. you, like don't play. Mm. So it's the terminal is like the minimal things, <laughs> like basically, mm -hmm. like like I I personally like it because, uh, it's like if I didn't say terminal to do something, it didn't do anything. Like basically, like if I click a button in a in a browser or something, it usually has some, like maybe predefined meaning mm -hmm. coded into that button but yeah. if i use a terminal i can decide like everything yeah. and and it's a different kind of like a paradigm of usage like the one is like programmatic usage and the other is like mm -hmm. interactive usage like you click something and it's like more visual and in many cases yeah. it's it's easier but um mm -hmm. and 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 like more you can do if the button does a lot of things for you it's very good of yeah. course like so so it's it's just like complementary approaches i would say like and yeah. you can decide which one works for you best yeah okay yeah is it precise to say lumi is a cluster yes definitely mm. here's the question yeah. can we deploy a robotic simulator nvidia isaac sim in a container 
and run yeah. in cloud mode. Yes, I mean, like yes. that answer says, that's a pretty typical mm -hmm. thing that happens. And I think, did we deploy that for other people? Also? Yeah, I've installed it at least once for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're thinking yeah, the that... Yeah, go ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, I was going to say, if you have this kind of question, it's good to make the issue and say, can mm -hmm. I do this? And we can say, well, first you search and see, is it already there? Then you can make an issue and ask us to install it. And we'll decide if it's... Um, uh, yeah, like the in, like the Isaac Sim is a good example of a of program that is uh, that definitely benefits from using the container approach because it's basically like a, it's a robotic simulation program that that also incorporates like computer vision and that sort of stuff. So you need to like uh, create like a virtual environment where the virtual robot can then drive around and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it needs visualization tools that are usually like. Anything involving like visualization or that sort of stuff usually requires libraries and things that are quite complex to install. So, so for that approach, like these kind of container approaches are very good. Yeah, what else is there? Uh, yeah, like, more questions like what's the limit between yeah. some connected workstations and the cluster like this question mm -hmm. here yeah like like usually the cluster is like a like a shorthand for the high performance computing cluster or something like that like yeah. what people use uh, where the high performance computing that's also like this kind of like okay what does this even mean this kind of like a word salad but uh, but uh, the the cluster the idea behind the cluster is that it's usually like multi-user system, like it's a multi-user system where there's usually some queue manager that manages the uh, the thing. So you can create a cluster out of workstation. So there's co thing called uh, uh, well now I'm blank blanking out. What's the uh, HD oh, Condor, mm -hmm. uh, HD Condor that uh, that can yeah. create like a cluster out of workstations mm -hmm. basically, uh, but but there's like like usually the cluster also implies these kinds of features that are like you can do. So you have a queue system, you have multi-user setup, you have a shared file system. Mm -hmm. Usually, like it's it's basically like yeah, like you know the story about the elephant and blind blind men trying out the elephant and one thinks it's a broom and one thinks it's a tree and, uh, yeah. and that sort of stuff. Like it's the same kind of thing that cluster is a co like combination of all of these different features. So it's also, it's a compute nodes. It's the shared file system mm -hmm. is the queue system. It's the software stack. Like it's, it's all the cluster yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it, it means that it's like one system designed to like utilize all of these features in order to make it possible to run certain yeah. kinds of programs which require these features. Yeah. So especially like in Lumi, Lumi's case, like what is a supercomputer and a cluster? Like supercomputer usually means that uh, it's big, <laughs> first off, and there's, uh, there's usually uh, like, a, like a certain kind of architecture throughout the computer so that you can run like these massive jobs on it. Like mm -hmm. very big jobs, and that requires all of the infrastructure what the cluster has. But basically, Lumi and R cluster is basically similar kind of a system. The scale is just different, and how what what's in there, like what software is there, and that sort of stuff is, is yeah. different. But both use, for example, same kind of file system. Uh, both use same kind of queuing system, and mm -hmm. both use L mode. So so basically. We'll we'll hear here tomorrow more about like how do you get from yeah. laptops to Lumi basically like how can you scale up yeah. and if you know how to run stuff in your local cluster it's quite easy to jump or easier mm -hmm. to jump to these supercomputers as well yeah and would you say that well there is no real strict definition I mean there's all different types of things and different people may call them clusters or not and so on. 
like I I just think that there's so much technical stuff that is like like yeah. and everybody's like like I don't know like everybody's there's so much technical jargon going in the field <laughs> that is yeah but nobody can decide on what what's what and I think that's it's like you can call them whatever you want as long as they do what you want and like 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 I I would I think. I would think more in the line of okay, what can I do with that? <laughs> like yeah. instead of like okay, what should I call it? And can I can I run my code on Lumi? Can I run my code on my local computer? Can I run it? Like it doesn't really matter what what the system is called, uh, as long as it produces the results that I want. Yeah. Ah. Uh... 